Okay, hi everybody. So today I wanna to talk about gut health and mental health and how the two are connected. So I did a presentation um, at this mental health summit with Kindred, it was a Kindred quest called Mind Matters. And I wanted to post it here because I actually haven't really posted anything about it. I do post healthy recipes and I talk about nutrition for mental health, but I haven't talked much about um, gut health and how that relates to mental health. So researchers and whatnot show or call the gut our second brain. And there's really good reasons behind that. So the gut and the brain are directly connected with neural pathways. And when people refer to gut health, they're talking about the gut microbiome, which is the bacteria that lives in your digestive tract. And when we eat certain foods um, and we don't eat certain foods, we irritate that lining and we throw our gut health out of balance. Um, there are some bacterial overgrowths too that are common in a lot of people depending on what they eat, um, but I'll get to that in a different video. So for now, I wanna focus on the good bacteria. And the good bacteria is known as probiotics. So probiotics create that healthy bacteria. And when you think of probiotic food, you're gonna to wanna to talk about um, fermented foods. So live cultured yogurt, for instance. Um, the live culture, those are the bacteria that you want in your gut that helps you protect against bad bacteria, they help to prevent against toxins, and they help reduce inflammation. And um, you're also gonna think about sauerkraut and kimchi and um, tempeh, which is a fermented soy product that people use in place of meat for protein. Those things are all fermented, which means they all contain the live active cultures that we want. And when our gut is taken care of and our little guys are running around in there and they're healthy and happy, um, that is when our brain is going to be a-okay. So the healthy bacteria, it lines the digestive tract, but it also lines and activates the neural pathways that lead from the gut directly to the brain. So when I mentioned that they help reduce inflammation, um, what happens is in the brain, a lot of times when people experience mental illness or have um, symptoms of mental illness, a lot of times that's actually caused by inflammation in the brain. So obviously you would like or should like to focus on the gut to help reduce inflammation in the brain. So there you go, that's one direct connection. Also, we have certain neurotransmitters that are created in the gut, such as serotonin. So serotonin is known as the happy chemical, and dopamine is also known um, to help you, help you regulate emotions, and 95% of serotonin is actually created in the digestive tract. So that is an obvious correlation between gut health and mental health, so that gut-brain connection in the second brain. Um, so you're gonna really wanna focus on that if you struggle with anxiety, um, or depression or any sort of mental health issues. And I have noticed the more I focus on my gut, the better I feel and the more I focus on my nutrition, of course. So probiotics, the gut microbiome. So how do you feed that probiotics? How do you make sure that that's healthy and full and active? Well, then you're gonna go and turn to prebiotics. So prebiotics, it's our dietary fibers that we ourselves cannot digest. So we eat these things and we can't digest that fiber fully. And so then that's where the probiotic, the gut microbiome comes in and they digest that. So our little friends inside our tummies, when they're healthy and you know, they eat that dietary fiber, which makes them healthier, more full and, and creates um, more bacteria that we want, which helps defend against the, the bacteria that we don't want. So when you're talking about prebiotic foods, uh, actually onions and garlic are really high in prebiotics which is great because you know if you wanna make any meal more delicious, chop up some onions and garlic before you do anything else and your food will be like a thousand times better and it always smells really good too. So even if you're a crappy cook and you order takeout and you pretend that you cooked something, just cook some onions and garlic in a skillet and no one will know, like they'll seriously think that you ate it. I think, or made it. I think I saw that on a movie once or something. Um, but anyways, whole grains are also good prebiotics. Um, quinoa, brown rice, barley, um, stuff like that. We have legumes, so beans. Um, asparagus is also a good prebiotic. Um, chicory root, Jerusalem artichokes are also good prebiotics. I personally, I don't think I've ever eaten a Jerusalem artichoke. I also don't think I've ever eaten chicory root. 
So maybe I'll do a um, recipe with it, with it soon because I don't know really what how to cook them. I don't even know if I've ever seen them in the store, but I'll give it a try. And regardless, those are also awesome prebiotics. So there you go. Probiotics are the gut microbiome. Prebiotics feed that gut microbiome and they all connect to the brain. The neural pathways are lined and activated from the gut directly to the brain and the healthy bacteria helps reduce inflammation. It helps to, um, let's see, inflammation. It helps to prevent um, bad bacteria, so basically it kills off the bad bacteria, and it reduces the toxins being coming into your blood or into your body. So obviously there are foods that irritate that. So usually when people are on a probiotic diet, they limit or eliminate dairy and red meat. Um, red meat is really hard to digest, and it stays in your stomach a long time. And that usually means that it's sort of, in a way, rotting in your stomach because it takes so long to digest. Obviously, if you have healthy bacteria, healthy gut bacteria, it'll more likely be easy for you to digest, but I think still limiting it is usually the best bet for most people in order to have a healthy gut. Same with dairy. Um, yes, so same with dairy. And there's also something in cheese. I'm forgetting what it's called right now, but there's something in cheese that helps to preserve it that also has an adverse effect on your stomach, um, your microbiome, your gut bacteria. So obviously probiotics, prebiotics, those are really great to start with, but there are also some really pivotal and important nutrients and vitamins that are great for your mental health. So the first one I wanna men mention is omega-3 since we're talking about the gut and the brain and the brain health and mental health. Um, omega-3 fatty acids are gonna come in things like avocado and fatty fish and eggs and they are great because they interact directly with neurotransmitters in the brain. And your head, your brain, is full of omega-3 fatty acids, hopefully. Um, so that, it, I almost picture it like a lubrication of the brain, protecting it from anything, any bad bacteria that's roaming around in your body. Um, another one that's really important is vitamin D, of course. Vitamin D, though, you're not gonna get enough of it in food. You're gonna get more of it from the sun. So obviously in the summer, in the springtime, you're good, go outside between the hours of 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. That's when the vitamin D content is the best. It's gonna improve your mood, your skin. I mean, it's just, it's really great for you. But during the winter, if you live in a place like I do in the Northeast where it's cloudy and dark, you're not gonna be able to get that sunshine. Um, and sad, seasonal affective disorder is real. I experience it, even when it's like two days gloomy, I get messed up. So I have to take vitamin D supplements because again, what you get in your food is not gonna be enough to, um, to build up the vitamin D content that you, that you need in order to affect your mood for the better. Another one is vitamin B, so vitamin B complex. Vitamin B12, vitamin B6. Um, it helps to regulate your mood. Um, it helps to elevate your mood. And studies have actually shown that it has a neuroprotective effect. So neuroprotective meaning it helps to um, prevent against neurodegeneration. So things like dementia and Alzheimer's and ADHD and uh, mental illnesses a lot of times come from a deterioration of the brain cells. So it helps to protect against that. There was actually a study done um, in patients with schizophrenia, with like early onset schizophrenia, and who were in the beginning stages of psychosis. They supplemented, you know, some of the participants with vitamin B complexes, and it stopped them from having a recurrence of psychosis. So it doesn't necessarily reduce symptoms, um, or stop it in its tracks, but it does reduce the likelihood of it happening again. It has an, it protects the neural pathways. So vitamin B. Magnesium is another one that's really great for your mental health. So magnesium has a calming effect, like a sedative effect on the nervous system. So if you have anxiety um, or panic attacks and you're, you're up here and your adrenaline's really high, um, magnesium can help kind of bring you down a little bit and sedate you a little bit in a healthy, um, all natural way. So also, um, magnesium is in delicious things like avocado, dark chocolate, um, fish. So you can get magnesium in a lot of things that you like really love. Um, so that's great too. And you can eat dark chocolate with um, 
live active culture probiotics and get a little dessert that's usually a dessert of mine is like shaved chocolate over um, probiotic uh, yogurt with maybe like a spoonful of almond butter almond also has omega-3 fatty acids in it so that's a go um, yeah you can make delicious meals with things that are really really good for you so magnesium magnesium melatonin melatonin I'm sure you've heard of it it has it's a sleeping aid um, which obviously shows you that it can help to kind of bring you down and, and sedate you a little bit and, and calm your nervous system so there you go probiotics prebiotics vitamin D vitamin B complex omega-3 fatty acids and magnesium if you want to start somewhere I would say start with probiotics and start with supplements and then add on as you go prebiotics are super easy because you know you can have this is a meal that I do a lot quinoa that's a prebiotic so quinoa onions and garlic all prebiotics with legal legumes like black beans which is also a prebiotic and then for my probiotics I'll pickle up really quickly some sauerkraut and I will put that on top of you know a bunch of veggies so uh, mushrooms shiitake mushrooms are also really good for you zucchini um, baby kale I'll toss that all in a saute pan and then I'll put a dollop of yogurt on top I know that sounds weird but I like really love sauces and you can mix the probiotic culture with seasonings too so one that's really good is like sesame oil and ponzu sauce to do it a little bit Asian and you just mix it up together in a little bowl and there you go you have a sauce made of probiotics literally live bacteria that is gonna be so good for your belly and so good for your body and so good for your life so there you go start with probiotics start with supplements vitamin D if you need it and prebiotics the easiest ones onions garlic asparagus for your prebiotics and for your probiotics fermented things sauerkraut kimchi pickled uh, vegetables you know pickled jalapenos pickles and then tempeh or tofu soy products that are fermented there you go. I hope that was informative. I hope it wasn't too long. Um, I also have a blog post, so head to the link in my bio and you can check that out in case you would rather read it than hear me talk about it. All right. Peace.